Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Seneca Libertarian Society. Doing a little anarchy moment here. I just finished reading a book. And I read a lot of books, and I talk about a lot of books on the podcast. And I also have, there's the recommended reading page over on the website at cynlibsoc.com. And this is me getting distracted for a moment. Okay, we can do that. That's why I shouldn't try to use the computer and record a podcast at the same time. Anyway, I read a lot of books. I just finished a book. And it was nice. I'm experiencing withdrawals, in fact. I started another book because for the first time in a while, I actually read a book that didn't have anything to do with statism, or philosophy, or politics, or science, or sociology, or whatever. Because, you know, reading books about the state is bad, okay? You know, and reading books about if you keep being a statist, you're going to have a bad time. You know, reading books about that is, is good, it's important. It's enlightening. Reading books written by statists defending the state is good to understand the statist way of thinking. You know, reading books about why feminism is bad, that's good. Reading books about why feminism is good, that's good. But God, fucking Jesus Christ on a stick and hell, man. After a while, just reading nothing but shit about the state it starts to hurt your brain. And those of you who may be in school at this time and most of your reading is school books, you know what I'm talking about. Reading a book that doesn't have anything to do with school. It's nice. So for the first time in a while, I read a fucking book entirely for pleasure. I read a couple of Doctor Who novels lately, which was for pleasure, and I've, I've talked about some of those. I got another one now that I haven't started yet. But just reading a book that's not about the state, even though, of course, in a way, all books are about the state because statism is so inherent in our culture that you can't really write a book that doesn't have statism in it. Even if you're writing something like The Hunger Games, which could be looked at as being anti-statist, the state is still in there. But reading a book where you know, defending or attacking the state is not the overarching point. It was nice. So anyhow, yeah, this book that I just finished, and I'm just going to talk about this book a little bit to talk about something that doesn't have to do with the fucking state. The book is called Parasite. It's written by Mira Grant. Apparently, she's a New York Times best-selling author. Okay, that's cool. It's, it's a reasonably good book. It's the writing I felt wasn't quite as tight as it could be all times because you know there's a lot of oh and then I came home and my boyfriend was there and oh he's so cute and oh I love my doggy that kind of the writing that puts in the details and stuff and I can I can get bored with that a little bit sometimes probably because I'm a boy but the book is well written in the sense that it's a breeze to read you know you can plow right through it so what this is about the concept of this book is that in the near future, when does this thing take place? 2027. In the near future, a company called Symbogen has biologic, bioengineered a tapeworm that you can put it inside a person, and the tapeworms are individually genetically engineered. So let's say you're a diabetic. Instead of having to take insulin all the time, you get this genetically engineered tapeworm designed which secretes insulin into your system so you don't have to do the medications anymore. So these tapeworms are in many, many people's intestines and providing them with medication and other health benefits. And so it's a really interesting premise because, of course, it's really not that far away from something that could be done 
genetically engineering organisms is coming. And I enjoy books like this that take those things and look at them you know, in a serious and maybe not even serious, but in an exploratory light, right? Because of course, many people here say, "Well, I would never want to genetically engineer tapeworm in my intestines," and it's easy to say that now. But you know, at one time, people would have said, "Well, I never want all of my personal details available to everybody on the planet Earth." But now we have Facebook and your personal details are available to everybody on the planet Earth and you don't even think twice about it. So things that you may think, well, I would never want that, I would never do that, right? The upcoming time when you will be able to implant the internet into your brain via some kind of chip. You know, how many people have ever said, well, I want a device that allows the government and the corporations to track me at all times wherever I go and allows them to listen in on my conversations without my permission. People would say, well, no, I don't want that. But of course, we all have cell phones. And everybody's totally OK with it. So something like this, implanting a tapeworm into a person for medical benefits, it, it could happen. I'll say this too, the character in this book I like the most is Tansy. I'll try not to give too many spoilers, but she's a little insane. But it's okay though, because she was the most interesting. The heroine, the protagonist of the story, got on my nerves sometimes because she was kind of whiny and somewhat passive and stuff like that. But okay, whatever. I mean, in this, the book has a little bit of a romance book flair to it just in the in my opinion the except and you know as I'm going through this book when you hear me ripping on it just keep in mind that I did read the entire book I finished it so if the book really sucked that bad I wouldn't have spent time reading the whole thing and if it sucked that bad I wouldn't be spending time right now talking about it so just a qualifier there for whenever I say bad things about the book there's a little too much of this, oh, my boyfriend, if, if I hadn't have been in love with him before, I would have fallen in love with him right now. Oh, it's like, oh, God, you're killing me. Can we just get to the, the action part? So anyhow, the point of the book, so all these people have tapeworms, not everybody in the world by any stretch, but people who can afford it have tapeworms. Everybody should be able to afford it because after all, Obamacare provides free health care for everyone. Ah, oh, I'm talking about the state. Stop it. Stop it. Bad. Bad. All right. People have these tapeworms and the tapeworms begin attempting to assert control over their host. And thus we get people who in the book are referred to as sleepwalkers because when the tapeworms take over them, of course the tapeworm doesn't have human knowledge and all this other stuff. And so it's like if you were dropped into an unfamiliar body. So anyhow, it's, it's a bit of a science medical thriller. Of course, the corporation that developed them is run by this creepy evil bad guy. To their credit, they're to her credit, her being the writer of the book, there's more than just two factions, the guys and the bad guys, although the third faction sadly does not emerge until almost the very end of the book. And in a, it makes sense why that would happen. So, I mean, the, the plot in the story is all quite coherent and sane, sane in the sense that Sane as in like a programming environment or a compiling environment is sane, not sane like insane. Sane in the sense that it all fits together, everything is there, it all really makes sense. Like as I was reading the book, there's none of these moments where you go, well, you know, there's a giant plot hole here, which was added just for the convenience of the author to be able to get where she wanted to go. So it's very well plotted out in that sense. It did have too much of this, oh, isn't this convenient how in the end it turns out that everybody knows everybody 
and everybody's related to everybody and oh look you know it's like oh my the the protagonist her father happens to be the big wig in the military who works for the biomedical type branch who's researching this and oh gosh her sister just happens to work there also and of course her boyfriend is trying, the company who developed the tapeworms, of course, wants her boyfriend to come work for them. But of course, and then her boyfriend's mother actually turns out to be, I won't say spoilers, but you know, it's, it's this thing, it's, it's what I call the, the, the Shakespearean resolution, or of course, the one who is even worse about this was, oh, that's the screensaver. The guy who was even worse was, oh God, what's his name? He wrote The Miser and he wrote Tartuffe. Damn it, I'm having a brain cramp. Anyway, The Miser, one of the stage plays I was in, right, The Miser spends all this time building up to, oh, the miser wants the young girl, but the young girl wants the young guy, and the young guy wants her, and we gotta get money, and all this, you know, and we gotta get all these plot things, and then it's all resolved in the last five minutes of the play when we discover that, oh, wait a minute, you're actually my sister, oh, you're my father, oh, wait, this woman over here is actually our mother, why, look, we are all related to each other, and suddenly we've all found each other again, and now we can be a happy family. And it's just like, ah, oh, fucking Christ, you build all this stuff up, and then you resolve it by making everybody related to each other. Just fucking kill me. And so Parasite suffered from a little bit of that. Everybody important is related to everybody else. The other thing about Parasite, which I saw this coming, the end of this book, and maybe it's just me, because sometimes I see what's coming, because I've watched enough horror movies and read enough horror and watched enough sci-fi and read enough sci-fi. I can see shit coming a lot of the times. To me, the end of the book was so painfully bloody obvious. I mean, I literally knew how I, the, the, the big reveal in this book. There's the big reveal, which is also the ending. I knew the big reveal from probably about page one. And by that, I mean before I even opened the book, because if you know what the book is about, it's about the tapeworms taking over people. And when you read it and you read the situation of the protagonist, I don't know, it was real fucking obvious to me. And I almost think that the book would have been better. See here, and here's, here's what I do like about this book also, is books like this will many times they'll have sort of this final revolution. Re revolution. <sighs> Resolution. Right, so the tapeworms either take over the planet and everybody's a tapeworm, or the tapeworms are defeated, right? You know, either the empire crushes the rebellion or the rebellion overthrows the empire or whatever, and it leaves and it's in so much as with any story, you can have this final conclusion, right? We, you know, in real life, there's never a final conclusion. Tomorrow always comes, something new comes up, yada, yada, yada. But the nice thing about this book is that late in the book, we find out a bunch of stuff. The third faction is revealed and the big reveal is made. And that's where it ends, which you know, so everything doesn't come together in this tidy little bundle at the end. It, it leaves you wondering, okay, well, great, what the fuck happened? Because in a sense, and I wonder if there's going to be another book after this, maybe there already is another book after this. I didn't really research to see if she's written a follow-up, but the point is, she's apparently written some other books. One is called Feed, one is called Deadline, one is called Blackout. And I'm just getting that from looking in the dust cover here. I'll have to check this out to see, because maybe there is a part two, because this is what I'm getting at. The book is elegantly set up 
to have a sequel. And I almost think the, sequ the sequel could be, I was going to say much more interesting, but whether or not the sequel is more interesting, of course, depends on what it is you're looking for. The, this book, as what it is, was a very good book. The sequel would probably be more action-y, more stuff happening, because more things would be coming to a head. This book was the build-up, the reveals, the revelations, the putting the clues together, all that other sort of stuff. So perhaps, perhaps she's going to write a second part to this, maybe even a third part, maybe a fourth part, who knows how many could come out of this. But the point is, the book leaves you hanging, unless, of course, like me, you saw the conclusion from the very first get-go. But there could be more books in the series. And so I'm, re I'm recommending that if you like what I call science, what I would call a science medical thriller, if you like these kind of books, and sure, you know, it's got the stuff, the military, you know, and the, his, the protagonist, his father, who is this big guy in the military, he's like, you know, you have to tell me what you know, or I'm going to charge you with treason and lock you up. And I'm just like, oh, God, what a statist motherfucking cocksucker. It's like she needs to just sever her ties with this asshole. So I didn't have much sympathy for the father because he's kind of a douchebag. Because what kind of fucking douchebag would be like, yes, tell me what I want to know, or else I will have the government put you in prison, and I don't care if you are my daughter. Oh, God, what a douche. Anyway, let's not talk about the state. So there it is, Parasite by Mira Grant. Check it out. It's it's a pretty good book, and I'm recommending it. And while the state is in there, it's, it's not about statism, because God knows you can't fucking... Live your entire life always talking about the fucking state and always being about politics, even if you're a fucking statist. You know, those of you who are statist and just everything in your life is about, oh, Obama's the Messiah or Obama's the Antichrist and just everything in your life is about fucking politics. And, oh, just, sh and can you please just shut the fuck up and talk about something else once in a while? God damn it. Read a fucking book. Go walk your dog. Go for a walk or something. God, the weather here was beautiful yesterday. Got out, got a little bit of exercise walking around today. It's windy. Anyway, yeah, that's it. I'm just, I'm just babbling now. And in a minute here, sometime later in the near future, I got to record another anarchy moment that'll be coming out actually before this one, because I'm going to be responding to a question I got on YouTube. So if you're listening to this anarchy moment, then that one's already come out. You can go back in time and hear it because the internet is timeless absolutely timeless.